I would uh, like to call to order the Board of Selectmen meeting for June 18, 2020. It's now 5.30 p.m. and I'd like to read the following. This meeting is being held remotely as an alternate means of public access pursuant to an order issued by the governor of Massachusetts dated March 12, 2020, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. You are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting may be, may be and are being recorded by the town of Hingham in accordance with the open meeting law. If any participant wishes to record this meeting, please notify the chair at the start of the meeting in accordance with Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20F, so that the chair may inform all other participants of said recording. If you could uh, use the raise hand function and let me know whether you intend to record the meeting this evening, that would be helpful. Uh, seeing none, uh, I would first like to uh, turn to my uh, colleague, Joe Fisher, to offer some words of remembrance for a longtime member and valued, a longtime member of the Zoning Board of Appeals and a, a valued uh, colleague and town volunteer, Joe Freeman, who we lost uh, earlier this month. Joe? Thank you, Karen. Um, so Joe Freeman, he passed away June 6, 2020, after suffering a heart attack at the Butterbrook Golf Club in Westford, Massachusetts. I've known Joe for 27 years as a neighbor, as a colleague on the Zoning Board of Appeals, and as a friend. In each one of those 27 years, Joe dedicated a good portion of his time and energy to making Hingham a better place, a welcoming community, and a place where he and others could enjoy their time with family and friends. I will miss him. And I'd like to express the condolences of the Board of Selectmen to his wife, Jane, and his son, James. Uh, they may have dialed in on this call. They ex expressed an interest to do so. I'm not sure if I ever sufficiently thank Joe for all his hard work on the Zoning Board of Appeals. Joe worked with me and others on the Zoning Board as we reviewed and issued permits for numerous projects, including practically every major 40B project in town. Joe made sure that the town's interests were, were well protected as we strived to achieve an adequate supply of affordable housing for our residents. Joe was also instrumental in the review of the plaza on South Street in the downtown area where Joseph's Hardware Store used to be located, for those who remember. Joe helped craft the zoning board permit that we issued in 2013 to South Shore Bank for the creation of a banking center on South Street. Joe was also significantly involved in the review of projects involving pier decks, ramps, and docks along the Hingham waterfront. Joe was the guy who sorted through complicated issues involving floodplain and watershed protection. Joe's background as an environmental consultant was invaluable to the town. Joe was also involved in 2017 in the board's review of work in connection with the new visitor center and gatehouse at World's End Reservation. But not all was good with Joe. If Joe was still around, I would thank him, but I would ask him why was he so opposed to approving additional cell towers when AT&T proposed their construction in 2014? Joe, we really do need better cell service in Hingham. And Joe, I would ask you, why were you in Westford playing golf earlier this month? You should know that we have much better golf courses in Hingham. Joe Freeman was a great guy, a friend to me, and a dedicated and active resident of Hingham. He and I would usually sit together at town meeting and trade comments and the occasional joke. I will be especially missing him at the upcoming 2020 town meeting this weekend. Thank you. I'd just like to offer a moment of silence in memory of Joe Freeman. Thank you. And thank you for those remarks, Joe. I appreciate it. Uh, moving on with the business of the meeting tonight, let me just tell you what we have on tap and uh, we can move forward. First and foremost is the uh, vote to consider the approval of an operations and maintenance agreement between the town of Hingham and Suez. Um, that would be the operator of the water system. And then we have four submissions for outside table service in connection with the governor's uh, relief for COVID-19 outdoor dining. Um, uh, so we've got four restaurants that have worked with the restaurant reopening group uh, to make those requests. 
uh, we'd have public comment, appointments, and reports. Uh, as always, um, the, the, initially the matters will be discussed among the members of the Board of Selectmen, and then I will recognize you, uh, members of the public, if you have a question or would care to make a comment. Uh, and I would ask you to use the raised hand function. It's just much easier for me to be able to recognize you. Uh, so thank you. Um, so first up, as I've indicated, is the consideration of the operations and maintenance agreement between the Town of Hingham and Suez Water Environmental Services, Inc. Uh, the, the consideration and vote we would take tonight is uh, in our capacity as the Board of Water Commissioners. Um, as you may recall, last night uh, we actually approved um, the, and, and authorize the, the signature of the asset purchase agreement, which is the agreement between um, Aquarian and, and Eversource and the town of Hingham for the acquisition of the assets of the water system. Um, we uh, pledged to town meeting pursuant to Article 11 of the 29 <clears throat> annual town meeting uh, warrant uh, that we would contract with a private firm specializing in water management and operation. Uh, the town went out to bid for those services and, uh, and uh, the RFP um, process uh, progressed uh, comprehensively and efficiently and resulted in an award of the bid uh, to Suez. Um, subsequent to the RFP process, um, the town worked through its legal counsel um, to develop a, uh, a comprehensive uh, water operation contract. That is what is before the board this evening. I'd like to turn to my colleague Mary Power to maybe offer some comments about the um, agreement and then to John Coughlin, our counsel who helped us draft the agreement. Um, thank Mary? you. Thank you. Uh, this is another significant milestone um, that actually has been a year in the making. Uh, last summer after the affirmative vote from town meeting, uh, the town began to draft a request for proposal. And, you know, that was a pretty significant effort because what we were actually doing as a town is we were defining the service levels that we thought were important um, for the water system going forward. Um, this was an effort that began with Andy Gottlieb from College Strategies, John Asher was involved, Jeff Nutting, Michelle Monsegur, uh, Mark White and Ryan Trahan from EPG. There, um, uh, the RFP was issued in the fall. Uh, we had and coordinated site visits. Um, there were additional questions that came to the town that we had to answer. Um, a couple hundred of them is what I remember. And the town was very fortunate in that we received three qualified bids from three operators, any one of whom uh, would have done a fine job Having said that, the selection team that was made up of Joe Welsh and Dick Norman from the T&E Committee, John Struzieri from Hull, Jeff Nutting, Ryan Trahan, John Coughlin, Michelle Monsegur, and Tom Mayo, uh, unanimously thought that Suez was head and shoulders above a very strong field. Um, I would just say that the procurement process is really complex um, because of all the public bidding requirements and when you layer a complex RFP like this for a water system on top of that, there was really the lot of potential for a lot of things to go wrong. And I'm so proud of the Hingham team because the execution was really flawless. Um, over the last couple of months, we've been engaged in the contracting process that John will talk about. Those discussions were cordial. Uh, we arrived at what I think is a mutually beneficial uh, arrangement. Uh, we particularly appreciate Suez's responsiveness. I know members of the Suez team are on this call. And again, have to thank John Coughlin for his dedication and just continued outstanding representation of the town. Suez is really eager to get started. Um, we've actually been having weekly calls with them every Thursday at one o'clock for a couple of months. And you know, with, with this action tonight, they're really gonna kind of kick it into high gear. Uh, they've already been in touch with the Transition and Evaluation Committee. And I would just say that it's really exciting to hear them talking about um, putting trailers in Hingham, finding a location for the customer service team that's actually gonna open a facility here in Hingham so people can 
you know, pay their bills uh, and, and have engagement with, uh, you know, with our operator. So it, it just is really um, exciting. Uh, I would just say one thing, and, and that is that, you know, uh, I've mentioned a lot of names and, you know, Karen, you mentioned a lot of these names last night as well. Um, but on this RFP in particular, I, I think we really need to acknowledge um, Tom Mayo, our town administrator and chief procurement officer, and Michelle Monsegur. They both worked countless hours on the development of the RFP, the execution of the RFP process, and the contracting. And, you know, this is one of those kinds of activities that sometimes goes on in the background. Um, you know, Tom may not be available or Michelle is tied up. There have been times during this process where, you know, this effort alone was at least half their time in, in a given week. And, you know, I just would say that their knowledge, their professionalism have just been so critical in bringing us to this, you know, to this point tonight. Um, so with that, I, I might turn it over to John Coughlin to just review some of the highlights of the contract that the board will be considering tonight. Thanks, Mary. That was a that was a great summary, and I totally agree with you. And I know we mentioned a lot of names, but to your point, there's been a lot of hard work on this by a lot of people um, on top of a, a very busy, you know, sort of regular business schedule. So I, I know, um, I, I know people may get tired of hearing it, but um, without the efforts of all of the people that you and I have talked about over the over these last couple nights, we wouldn't be sitting here tonight um, getting this done. So thank you. Um, John Coughlin, would you mind taking us through the, some of the specifics of the agreement? Sure, thanks, Karen. Um, so I'll go through kind of the main uh, points of the agreement. Um, the agreement itself um, has um, some exhibits attached to its A through G. So the whole agreement is over 100 pages, uh, but I'll go through kind of the main, uh, the main point. So the agreement incorporates the terms of the RFP um, that Mary had mentioned, um, which went out last fall. Um, and was reviewed by the RFP evaluation team. Um, so the scope of services under the agreement in Article 1 includes the full uh, maintenance and operation of the water system, uh, including customer service and billing. And as we spoke last night about the draft, um, the APA that was approved, um, there is going to be a subcontract between uh, Suez and Eversource to continue the billing during an interim period and then uh, that billing uh, function will be taken over by Suez uh, once that interim uh, transition is done. Um, under Article 2, the compensation under the agreement is based on the company's price proposal. Um, so you can see that in year one, um, it starts off with an annual uh, figure uh, with um, billing of $4,741,066. Um, and then it also escalates in year two, and then each year thereafter, um, throughout the term of the agreement and any extension, there's an escalation fee based on uh, inflation. So that's built into the contract. Um, also under Article 2, uh, there's the annual maintenance fund. Uh, so under this agreement and in accordance with the RFP, each maintenance event, uh, the company is responsible for the first 10,000. Uh, anything above 10,000 would be considered a capital uh, repair that the town would be responsible for. And there's an annual maintenance cap of 645,000 uh, in each year of the contract, and that also gets adjusted up based on the escalation factor. Um, under the agreement, the town is the owner of the system, Suez is uh, the operator. Uh, so any major capital improvements, new water lines, any repair at the treatment plant would be uh, the town's responsibility as the owner of the system. Uh, the term of the agreement uh, in accordance with the RFP is five years, and the town has the option of uh, an additional five-year term, uh, we'd have to give advance notice if we wanted to exercise that option. Uh, under Article 4, um, in accordance with the RFP again, uh, the company had to submit a staffing plan. Uh, that's attached as Exhibit F, um, and uh, that requires uh, Suez to interview all the present uh, employees at Aquarian um, in order to try to keep that um, the staffing uh, in place uh, for continuity from one transition to another. Uh, under Article 8, um, the agreement covers all extensions to the water system. So, for example, if a subdivision is put in town, uh, that subdivision could be connected to the water system. It would be covered by this agreement uh, without any additional cost. Uh, the only time there would be an increase is if there was a significant 
extension of the system, uh, which resulted in an increase of customers of more than 2% from the current base or more than 50,000 gallons of treatable water uh, based on an average year. Um, and then we also added in um, some protections uh, to resolve any disputes between the parties. So Article 15 has the dispute resolution procedure um, where there's an informal procedure between the town and the company followed by uh, arbitration if uh, the parties cannot resolve any disputes at that informal stage. Um, and the intent there was to try to resolve any disputes quickly and to avoid uh, any kind of lengthy uh, litigation. So those are the major terms uh, of the agreement. I'll go through any other sections if anybody's got questions on them. Uh, and I think we've all um, appreciated your time um, as well as Carrie's time and Susan's time to um, to review the um, the development and evolution of this agreement, you know, over the course of the last few months um, since the RFP uh, was accepted. So I, I've, you know, I, I think we've all appreciated understanding where we were heading and, uh, you know, the, the sort of legal decision points that the town needed to make in, um, in coming together on this agreement. Uh, Joe, any questions for John Coughlin? Um, just a few, but I did want to express my thanks uh, to John and really the whole team. Uh, this is really a, an incredible effort. Um, and the first question, John, I'm not sure you're the one to answer it. What's the expected start date for this agreement? So the, there's two sections of this agreement. The first is the transition services, um, which we would expect, um, if it's approved tonight, to start tomorrow. Um, since the asset purchase agreement has been executed and there's a July 31st closing date, um, that gives us about six weeks to do a transition. So uh, the transition services would start uh, immediately. Um, the actual O&M operation uh, where the town begins to pay uh, the monthly fee based on the, the RFP proposal would start uh, July 31st, August 1st, depending on if we do a transition at midnight or how that plays out. Um, so we'd be looking at an August 1st start date for Suez. Okay. So either tomorrow or August 1st, what, if anything, changes for the water user? Does billing change? Does the phone calls change? The phone numbers? What changes and when can we expect to see those changes? So I don't have the answers to all of those questions, Joe. I think some of that will be part of the transition, but certainly um, Suez will have its own. Um, there'll be new numbers to contact um, uh, Suez because they are uh, going to be the operator of the system um, and Aquarian will no longer be doing that work other than the behind the scenes billing. So um, I think as part of that transition, um, we're going to have to have some public education and some public announcements as to, you know, how those changes are going to, are going to occur. I know Suez is looking for a customer service office um, in Hingham as we speak. Um, so a lot of that stuff um, is going to have to be worked out over the next six weeks. So even though the agreement's starting tomorrow, if, if I have an Aquarian bill, I should just continue to pay Aquarian business as usual until I'm instructed otherwise? Correct. And you should continue to contact Aquarian until instructed otherwise, okay. um, all the way through the end of July. Aquarian will continue to do the good husbandry operation until July 31st. Um, and you mentioned that uh, Suez will be interviewing the current employees of Aquarian. Do you know when that's going to occur? I don't, but I think they want to get started as soon as possible. Right. I mean, in the past, we've just heard a sense of uh, concern from the employees. I want to make sure that there's an appropriate outreach and they, they know that this is happening, when it's happening, and that uh, it just moves along. Yep. And I've been in touch with the council that represents yeah. um, the employees just to keep them in the loop. Uh, but I, I expect there'll be quite a bit of phone calls and information shared starting yeah. tomorrow now that these two contracts are sure. out of the way. So. Great. Um, in the past, we've talked about the standard of care applicable to Aquarium, which is good husbandry. What's the standard of care applicable to Suez? So on page two of the agreement, it has a standard of care. Um, they have to uh, perform the services in accordance with the terms and conditions of this agreement with a degree of care and skill consistent with standards applicable to persons performing services under similar conditions and circumstances in accordance with standard industry practice, in accordance with all applicable fates, uh, federal, state, yeah. local laws and regulations. So, you know, this is a highly regulated, sure. um, obviously, um, okay. the operation of a water system. So all of the DEP 
regulations um, in the exhibits are incorporated into this agreement. So they would have to comply with all of those. Great. Um, and one last question. What is the reporting structure applicable to Suez? Who do they report to? Who manages Suez from the towns and uh, from the water company's perspective? So under the agreement, uh, we've put in a section, um, and this is for Suez's benefit so they know who to go to. Uh, they report directly to the water superintendent or the town administrator if the water superintendent's not available um, for all kind of day-to-day -day matters. Um, anything to do with setting policy, rules and procedures, amendments to the contract, uh, those would have to go up to the water commissioners, but they would report to the water superintendent on a day-to-day -day basis, so they have a primary contact. Great. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Mary, any further questions or comments uh, for John Coughlin or about the agreement? Uh, you know, John, I just wondered if, um, just as a follow-up to Joe's question, kind of about the standard of care, you know, without getting into detail, could you maybe just speak for a couple minutes about the scope of services that's one of the exhibits to the um, contract? Because I think that, you know, as, as we're thinking about standard of care, some of that also has to do with um, the types and frequency of um, preventive maintenance. Right, and if you, and if you look at exhibit, um, I believe that that is exhibit. Is it, is it, um, so is it's it exhibit B. B? Yeah. Yep. Um, nope, that's transition. I'm sorry, it's exhibit C. Um, so the scope of services under the uh, operation and maintenance, um, if you go through that section, it's very comprehensive. Um, all of these terms were included in the RFP um, that we had a lot of help drafting, including using the Bonstable um, RFP as an example. Um, uh, Ryan Trahan from EPG was very helpful in putting these uh, specs together. But if you go through there, it has very specific details about, you know, the flushing program and replacing the fire hydrants and uh, the frequency of maintenance on all of these items. And it really breaks it down into categories of, you know, the treatment plant, the pumping station. Um, each uh, component of the system um, has detailed list of exactly uh, the maintenance that needs to be done on a regular basis. Um, and all of that is incorporated into the contract that the water superintendent can uh, monitor and enforce. And there's a monthly reporting requirement where Suez will report to the town every month um, all of their activities, um, including expenditures under the maintenance cap and uh, obviously emergency expenditures and anything along those lines. So that exhibit C, I think, is, is fairly comprehensive. Um, and those are all the terms of the RFP that were incorporated into the contract. Mary, anything further? No, thank you. Great. Uh, I see Mr. Phillips and Mr. O'Brien from Suez. Uh, would either one of you gentlemen care to make any comments in connection with the, uh, the agreement at this point? Hi, Karen. This is Jason O'Brien from Suez. Can you hear me? I think somebody yeah. just unmuted me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can hear you. Yep. Okay. Um, I, uh, just again, I mean, I was there when the, the town selected to move forward with Suez and um, I think, uh, um, John did a, did a great job describing um, the, the agreement that we put together. And I, and I think it was a great uh, collaboration between us and the town to get through the, from the RFP stage through to the, to, to the contract. And I think it was a, it's a great contract for the town and for Suez. And we're just really excited to start our partnership here with the town of Hingham and get going as early as tomorrow. Great, you, you broke up uh, there a little bit at the end, um, but, but we, uh, I think, share your enthusiasm for, uh, you know, getting you on board. As Mary said, we're, we're excited to hear about uh, your plans for locating in Hingham. And uh, to Joe's point, I know that the employees of Aquarian are anxious to begin their conversations with you about how they might continue to contribute to the operation of the water system, uh, you know, under your management. So uh, I appreciate both, uh, both of you joining the call this evening. And um, if there are no further comments from, from the Suez folks, then I'd open it up to the, uh, <clears throat> to the public for comment. Any members of the public um, have any questions or comments with respect to the operation and maintenance agreement with Suez that the town intends to enter? 
Karen. Sorry, it's Carol Meyer. I'm just on audio. Hi, Karen. Um, when, I, hi. I just, I missed the, um, I think it was $4 million figure for the first year. Could you just clarify that or could somebody clarify that? Uh, <clears throat> sure, John. Sure. Yeah. Yep. It was um, contract year one, and this includes, there were two options with and without billing. This includes with billing. Okay. Um, uh, this would be $4 million. Seven forty seven hundred and forty one thousand and sixty six dollars. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. And Mary, do you do you maybe want to speak to the fact that um, you know these bids are consistent with the um, with the financial assumptions that that we or, or the the contracts consistent with the financial assumptions that were presented to town meeting? Sure. Um, you know, as you just said, Karen, um, the uh, you know. The, the, uh, the cost of this contract fits within um, the, pr the projections that the town has. While the, the contract bids came in a little bit higher than what we were carrying in the model going into town meeting, that's uh, more than made up for by uh, lower debt service because of interest rate favorability. So um, the enterprise fund budget that the town has adopted for this year uh, is showing a, uh, a, a surplus, uh, a budgeted surplus. And um, as, as we project this out, it is uh, overall consistent with the projections and the estimated savings that were discussed at town meeting. Great, thank you. Uh, any further questions or comments with respect to the O&M agreement? Okay, seeing none, I would, uh, I would take a motion. Mary? Okay, uh, I would make a motion that the Board of Selectmen, acting as the Board of Water Commissioners pursuant to Article 11 of the 2019 Town of Hingham Annual Town Meeting, and chapter 139 of the acts of 1879 as amended and all other applicable laws do hereby vote to approve and sign the operations and maintenance agreement in substantially the form attached hereto between the town of Hingham and Suez Water Environmental Services, Inc. Second. All those in favor? Joe? Aye. Mary? Aye. Aaron? Aye. Excellent work, everybody. Very well done. Another uh, big milestone in the, uh, the acquisition and uh, operation of our water system. Really appreciate everybody's efforts on this. And thanks to the Suez folks for being on the line. Uh, okay, uh, the next item on our agenda tonight is the review of applications for outside table service uh, from four uh, local restaurants, Burton's, The 99, the Boathouse Bistro, and Square Cafe. You may recall, um, if you've been on the line, uh, that earlier in June, I think June 9th, um, the board took up a uh, restaurant outdoor table service policy um, that was carefully um, crafted uh, by the restaurant opening group and legal counsel Susan Murphy. And I'm just going to pause. And I, I know I know we read off a lot of names, but uh, we we really couldn't get all of this done without the, the teamwork of both volunteers and staff. And in this case, uh, just an extraordinary extraordinary effort by the the staff at Town Hall to work quickly to first of all craft. A comprehensive policy and a system for restaurants to be able to apply quickly um, in order to expand outdoor table service, which is the entire you know point of the, um, the opportunity. Um, but Emily Wentworth, Mike Clancy, Susan Sarney, Sergeant Kilroy, Lieutenant DiNapoli, uh, Chief of Police Glenn Olson, and our own Sharon Perfetti, uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't be here tonight with these applications before us to. Um, provide the opportunity for outdoor dining for our citizens and for the outdoor operation of our, uh, our local restaurants, which is, um, you know, so important to, to hang up. So um, uh, having said that, uh, I would take up the first application, which is uh, Burton's uh, Grill and Bar uh, at Derby Street, request for outs outside table service and modifications to uh, a li their liquor license. Is there somebody here from uh, on the line from um, 
from Burton's. Yes. Uh, could you take Could you state your name for the replica? here? Richard Lombardi. Okay. Richard, um, can you take us kind of quickly through what it is you're asking for? And then maybe I'll ask uh, a staff from the working group. And uh, Susan Murphy is sharing uh, the, the uh, uh, picture of the outdoor seating uh, that you're requesting. Yes, if you're looking at that picture on the right, I'm looking to add an additional um, four, yeah, right there, about four tables, um, all deuces. So it's just to make sure I'm within the six feet of separation. Um, so it's an extension of the other side of the patio because all my outside patio tables could not okay. fit in that area. Okay, so you, ha you had some outdoor seating before, so this is just an expansion on the other side, is that correct? That is correct, yes. Okay, great. Um, is there a, a member of the restaurant reopening group that might want to comment on the uh, process of this application? So Karen, each of these, this is Susan Murphy, each of the applications were, uh, the group broke up and had two members each assigned so that two members, everyone participated, but there were two primary contacts with each restaurant. For this restaurant, it was Susan Sarney and Chief Olson. Okay. Susan, are you, Susan or Glenn, are you on the line? Can't unmute. Um, this is Susan. I work with Glenn on this. Okay. They're providing six feet between table to table. Um, they're showing arrows for where wait staff is coming in and where restroom use is going on. My staff, my food inspector will be on site to do compliance checks once they open to be sure that all COVID 19 um, state regulations are being followed. I'm good with this one. Great. And Chief, you're okay with this as well? Yes, I'm okay with it. Um, there are three parking spots that they're going to lose, but that won't be a parking issue in that area. Um, the area where they're up, there's a five inch curb up to the sidewalk, and there's also curbing stops in front of that. And they're going to uh, put up some barricades at the beginning of the parking spot so that no one tries to get in. So we feel it's a safe setup and there's no issues there. Okay. And uh, Barnes and Noble and uh, Talbot's there are, and William Sonoma are okay with this. They're, they don't, there's no impediment to the business operations. With the, yeah. with the Derby shops, the, um, the working group had a lot of communications with the, the owners of the Derby shops. Um, in connection there, in particular, their property manager who worked out plans in advance that had been shared with um, the Board of Health staff and with the police department on where all of the different both restaurants could potentially do outside seating and where all of the stores could potentially do curbside pickup. So all of this and who was going to be allowed to set up where had been thoroughly vetted with by the landlord with all of their tenants in advance. Um, so that is what the, uh, the working group relied on in connection with the Derby Street Shop applications. Great, thank you. Um, uh, Joe, any, any questions with respect to this uh, application? Um, it looks complete. I, it looks like safety issues are dealt with, the health issues are dealt with. Uh, the only question I have is, are there any uh, limitation on the hours uh, for outdoor seating that differ from the general hours for that the restaurant would otherwise be open? The, the applicant had uh, set forth hours of operation in their OTS um, outdoor table service application, which received in your packet. Um, and those would have the outdoor going until 9 p.m. each night of the week. And the group did not find that, did not find that problematic. That make, I just didn't see that listed in the conditions that we would be voting on for this application. That, that is going to be on the, the, the vote is going to approve it. The project and then the liquor license forms that Sharon Perfetti, and I can have Sharon speak to these better than I can, uh, that are going to get filed with the ABCC will have the hours of operation set forth on those ABCC filings. 
Got it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anything further, Joe? No. Mary, I'm good with this. Questions? Um, just, just a question. Where will, um, if guests are waiting for a table and it's not ready, where will they wait? They'll be waiting either in their car or okay. across the street walking around. They're going to be told that they have to go shopping for a little longer until we can get the table ready for them. They'll be at the Apple store. <laughs> uh, and um, and then uh, where will the staff outside, will there be like a staff person out there, you know, I'm just sort of looking at the diagram, will there be some kind of a place where staff will be to sort of get people to their tables? Yeah, those are all uh, windows. So we can see as the guest approaches now. Okay. So once they come to the door, we have the signage to tell them to wait outside so we greet them. Okay. And we so greet them and then let them know if the table's ready. If not, they have to uh, step away until the table's ready and then we'll call them. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't have any further questions. If, if I can just follow up, how, how will you call them? How uh, they you? give us their uh, telephone numbers when they make reservations. Which Excellent. Reservations only. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, questions or comments from the public with respect to Burton's Grill outdoor dining uh, proposal? I am not seeing any. Um, I chatted with Susan um, uh, earlier today uh, to talk a little bit about adding a couple of um, a couple of things to the vote. Um, so, in if if we look at the vote list in number six. Um, I, you know, and I realize this might be just overkill. This talks about unsafe conditions. So I might say something like if determined by the town that an unsafe condition exists. Um, you know, initially I was going to put in the police department or the fire department. I think if we say the town, you know, we, we can operate through Susan or, or Glenn or Steve. And, um, you know, if the condition is unsafe, uh, we can make that determination. So I just, I guess I'd appreciate that qualification. Um, and in the second vote, um, uh, I guess, I, it, it, and again, maybe this is all, because we're taking this vote second, maybe it's implicit, but um, I, I would prefer that, this kind of goes to your point, Joe, about the hours. I would sort of prefer that the second vote be tied to the, the conditions of the outdoor dining you know, application, so it's all kind of one package. So they're altering their liquor license, but they're altering altering that consistent with the outdoor dining um, or outdoor table service uh, conditions and application and conditions or something like that. Yep, okay. Um, so, let's see, it's temporary alter license. So should I take a take a shot? I think. All right, all right. I can do it. Whatever you want. Yeah, uh, if you don't mind doing it, it the, I think the only the only alteration in the first vote is just the additional, sure. additional town. What the town? Yep. So um, I move that the board approve the application of Burton's Grill of Hingham LLC, DBA Burton's Grill and Bar to expand outside table service, OTS, in accordance with COVID-19 order number 35 and the Town of Hingham COVID-19 temporary policy regarding restaurant outdoor table service, the OTS policy, subject to the following conditions. A, site-specific conditions. One, the three parking spaces shown as no parking on the approved plan shall be blocked in a manner satisfactory to the Hingham Police Department. B, general conditions. Outside table service shall be permitted in compliance with the approved plan. Two, the location, size, and layout of the OTS premises, as defined in the OTS policy, approved herein may not be modified without further approval. Any request for modification must be submitted in writing with details as the as to the proposed modifications to restaurant opening at hingham.ma.gov. Three, 
addition of amenities such as tents or outdoor heating units is subject to further review and approval. Requests for such amenities shall be sent in writing to the same email address, restaurant opening at hinghammay.gov. Four, approval holder shall be responsible for regular cleaning of trash and food in the OTS premises and shall not allow trash, food, or other nutrients to accumulate or be deposited intentionally or unintentionally into storm drains. Five, approval holder shall fully comply with all applicable state and local laws, regulations, and standards, including without limitation A, Town of Hingham COVID-19 temporary policy regarding restaurant outdoor table service, B, Massachusetts COVID-19 mandatory workplace safety standards, C, Massachusetts COVID-19 safety standards and checklist restaurants, D, ABCC advisory regarding guidelines for extension of premises to patio and outdoor areas. Six, this approval may be subject to additional public safety conditions to ensure the safety of the diners, pedestrians, and vehicles. If determined by the town, then an unsafe condition exists once outside table service is in operation. Seven, the establishment may be subject to periodic inspection for compliance with this approval. Failure to comply with this approval may result in suspension or revocation of this approval and in fines in accordance with Massachusetts law. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Mary? Aye. Karen? Aye. Uh, I would, okay. I, think I would a, make a, a second, second motion that the board approve the request of Burton's Grill of Hingham LLC, DBA, Burton's Grill and Bar, pursuant to COVID-19 order number 35, to temporarily alter the license premises under liquor license number 00050-RS-0528 for the period commencing as of the date of this approval and expiring on November 1, 2020 for operations in compliance with the aforesaid motion just adopted. Second. All those in favor? Joe? Aye. Mary? Aye. Karen? Aye. Excellent. Great. So Joe... Excuse, uh, excuse me, Karen. I'm yeah. sorry. This is, this is Susan. I just wanted to make a note um, for the applicants. Um, so the way it works under the order, it, uh, the governor's order, is that this becomes effective once it's filed with the town clerk's office. The intention is, and again, Sharon's on the phone, so she should jump in with any details, but I believe the intention is to get these, the permits that have been prepared in final form emailed to the town clerk's office in the morning, and then once the town clerk confirms receipt of them by email, then that will be forwarded to the applicants so that they know that their approval is in, in effect. So... So um, that that is the process. They won't be in effect until they get confirmation by email that it is in fact in effect. Okay. Uh, you'll see certain of the applications do have specific conditions that they cannot begin operating until they do something further. That's not the case for this applicant, but you'll see those as we go forward. So, okay. Su Susan, perhaps the second vote language should have read for the com for the period commencing as of the effective date of this approval and expiring on November 1, 2020, would, would that be more appropriate? That would be more precise, yes. Okay, so uh, I would move to so amend my prior motion to have that language. So commencing as of the effective date of this approval and expiring on November 1, 2020. Uh, second. All those in favor of the amended motion, Joe? Aye. Mary? Aye. Karen? Aye. So, so Joe, I think the the amend that amendment and the the additional language you you read for for both the first vote and the second vote, I think those are going to carry over for all of these votes. Yeah, because they're, okay. they're they're in the general conditions. Okay. Um, so let me ask one other thing. So, you get the email from the town clerk. 
my understanding is, and again, I know Sharon's on the line, we also need to, to make, to, to provide a notification to the ABCC. Um, will that hap will that be happen at the same time? So once you get the email from Eileen, you're good to go, including um, the expansion of, or alteration of the liquor license? That's correct. I have the uh, local licensing authority certification form ready to go. So as soon as I get that, um, we get notification back from Eileen. We can I can send them off to the ABCC. Okay. Okay. So it should all be able to happen, I guess, in that same time period. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. And thank, thanks for all your work on this, Sharon. Um, as usual, keeping all of the pieces of paper organized and uh, ready to go. Um, um, next up uh, on the agenda is the out, outside uh, outdoor table service for the 99 restaurant and pub. Is there somebody on the line from the 99 that could briefly describe um, what you're asking for this evening? Yes, there is. My name's Tom Catanio, operations director with the 99 restaurants. Great. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Karen, uh, if I may, I, and I apologize for interrupting the Susan Mayor, I'm just putting up the aerial for a second just to give the Board of Selectmen uh, um, kind of the aerial context, and then I'll put up uh, the applicant's plan. But the area, sorry, the area in question is this area that my mouse is circling right here. So on, from your view, it's to the left of the restaurant. From Route 3A, it's to the right of the restaurant. I'm not seeing anything. Yeah, we're not seeing it's not shared, Susan. Oh, it's not showing. Why is that being? I apologize. Try that one more time. Is it there now? Yes. There it is. Yes. Okay. Sorry. I apologize. So you this area right this here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you mean you guys couldn't see that? Exactly. <laughs> um, so yes, it's this area right here. So to the left from your view and from Route 3A to the right side of the restaurant. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and now I'm gonna replace that with their actual plan, which will take me one second to do. Okay, so now you, will, um, you can see that here is the side of the restaurant. No, I guess if I turned it sideways, that would probably give you the same orientation. I apologize. See if I can get that to happen. Here we go. Um, is that then the correct, that's the correct orientation. 3A is below in this picture. Okay. Tom, do you want to take us through this? Yeah, so um, we're looking to put six tables on that mulched area to the right of the building as you're facing it from Route 3A. Um, there are uh, two, four, six parking spots that we're going to, actually they already have been, uh, stanchions were built and uh, chained and they are blocked and marked no parking. Um, the tables will seat anywhere from four to six people with a total of, I believe it's, uh, 34 seats that we have listed there. We have a separate side entrance right below the bottom left table for the employees um, to enter and exit. That is separate from where the, uh, the guests would be coming in through the front doors. We have defined uh, travel lanes for the guests to go to the uh, restrooms. Um, and those are all clearly marked. We have six foot uh, delineations throughout the entire restaurant and all of the aisles. Um, and we, what else? Um, and that's it. Every one of our team members that is working is taking, is required to take four serve safe, uh, three serve safe COVID exams, as well as a 99 one, uh, getting them up to date and speed on all of the um, current regulations and, and safety requirements that exist in our new world. And uh, they're not allowed to work until they have taken all of those precautions. And I feel very confident in the um, steps that we've taken to secure the inside of the restaurant. So in terms of uh, sanitation and safety. So. Great, thank you. 
And I understand, I know that earlier, earlier this evening, you provided us with a letter uh, from your landlord confirming yes. this plan, right? Yep. Correct. Great. Um, is there a representative from the restaurant reopening group that uh, could speak to this application? That would be Mike or Emily. Hi, it's Mike Plant. Can you hear me? Hi, Mike. How are you? Good. Um, I just wanted to uh, say that um, everybody from the uh, reopening group that went through this um, plan um, approved it uh, between the Board of Health, the uh, Building Department, Fire Department, the Police Department, Zoning, and Town Council. Um, you know, we hashed out a lot of different things on all of the different plans. Uh, the chief, uh, the police chief, uh, Glenn Olson, was concerned about the parking that was close to where the tables were going to be. So we ended up um, closing those parking spaces off. Um, Lieutenant DiNapoli was concerned about if they had um, glass tables because they've had the sun go through the tables and cause a fire on the mulch on different occasions. So we told the applicant they all had to be solid tables. Um, there is going to be uh, stanchions and chains all the way around the, the uh, entire spot. Uh, Susan with the Board of Health made sure that the aisles are clear for the people to go in and out of the building. Um, I looked at the architectural access board for the handicap for those uh, patrons that can come in and out safely. And um, again, with Susan and Sharon, um, we all felt that, um, uh, that the 99 and Tom came up with a good plan and we're all in favor of it. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, Joe, well, questions, questions with respect to the 99 uh, application? Well, I can't resist. This is definitely the real deal. So it's uh, very nice. Um, I did have a, a question about the, um, the plan for enclosure. I, I did note, and I, I, I did hear, hear the building commissioner's comments, but I note that in the application, as well as in our proposed motion, there's a concern uh, that the proposed enclosure does not extend around the entire OTS premises, at least as shown. So I, just if I could be updated as to where that stands. Yes, um, uh, Joe, I did explain that to Tom in an email that that has to be completely enclosed and each of the point persons on all of the different uh, establishments that are gonna have these outdoor seatings, we will be doing an inspection before they're allowed to open so if there's any tweaks out there at on site, they will have to take care of that. So, but, but do we have a plan now that shows that enclosure? I believe the, the last one they sent did have that. Uh, I, my understanding is that the last one they sent included a detail of what they might propose and that the group was okay with that. So, as long as they actually, yeah, as long as they include that enclosure all the way around, um, I think the group would be all right with it. So, right. So I, my understanding is they have it set up and that's why they're able to visualize it. But in setting it up, there were gaps in it. So it's just that yeah. certain gaps have to be closed. Yeah. So I guess what I'd suggest is it, what, I'm not going to hold up the motion. Yep. Yeah. But I would suggest that uh, once the plan is available that shows the full enclosure that it submitted to this board just as part of the record. Absolutely. Thank you. No other questions. Thanks, Joe. Um, uh, Mary, questions or comments on this application? I, I just had one question. As, as I was looking at the OTS application, if I was reading it correctly, it was asking for 12 tables with a total of 56 seats. Am I correct that right now you're only looking for six tables and 34 seats? Correct. Okay. And I guess my question is, as we're, as because the application is asking for, 
is is asking for 12 is is our vote tonight approving the 12 or are we approving the plan for the six you are approving for six okay yep it's thank just you. the approved plan yep okay thank you for the clarification no other questions uh i just had one quick question um maybe for uh sergeant kilroy or the chief and that was that's just uh you know that corner getting in getting into the plaza is you know is busy um so traffic wise you're satisfied that that this is all going to work yes ma'am and we're going to also uh you know obviously observe everything make sure and if anything does appear to be out of the ordinary or unsafe we will make adjustments as needed okay thank you uh, questions or comments from the public with respect to the 99's request for outdoor table service? Seeing none, I would take a motion. So I'm going to take a stab at this, um, and uh, I will ask Susan Murphy uh, if you don't mind interrupting me if you disagree with the change that I made in section A2 with respect to the plan. Okay. Um, okay. So mm -hmm. I move that the board approve the application of 99 Restaurants of Boston, LLC, DBA 99 Restaurant and Pub to expand outside table service, OTS, in accordance with COVID-19 order number 35 and the Town of Hingham COVID-19 temporary policy regarding restaurants, regarding restaurant outdoor table service, the OTS policy, subject to the following conditions. A, site specific conditions. One, no glass tables may be used over a mulched area. Two, Susan, please take note. In accordance with ABC guidelines for extension of premises to patio and outdoor areas, the entire OTS premises as defined in the OTS policy and shown on the preliminary preliminarily approved plan must be enclosed by a fence, rope, or other means to prevent access from the pedestrian walkway areas. The proposed enclosure, enclosure as shown on the preliminarily approved plan does not extend around the entire OTS premises. The enclosure must be extended around the entire OTS premises prior to opening of the OTS premises with a final approval plan to be promptly filed with the Board of Selectmen. B, general conditions. One, outside table service shall be permitted in compliance with the approved plan. Two, the location, size, and location of the OTS premises approved herein may not be modified without further approval. Any request for modification must be submitted in writing with detail as to the proposed modification to restaurant opening at hinghamma.gov. Addit three, addition of amenities such as tents or outdoor he heating units is subject to further review and approval. Requests for such amenities shall be sent in writing to restaurant opening at hinghamma.gov. Four, approval holder shall be responsible for regular cleaning of trash and food in the OTS premises and shall not allow trash, food, or other nutrients to accumulate or be deposited intentionally or unintentionally into storm drains. Five, approval holder shall fully comply with all applicable state and local laws, regulations, and standards, including without limitation, A, Town of Hingham COVID-19 temporary policy regarding restaurant outdoor table service, B, Massachusetts COVID-19 mandatory workplace safety standards. C, Massachusetts COVID-19 safety standards and checklist restaurants. D, ABCC advisory regarding guidelines to extension of premises to patio and outdoor areas. Six, this approval may be subject to additional public safety conditions to ensure the safety of the diners, pedestrians, and vehicles if determined by the town that an unsafe condition exists once outside table service is in operation. Seven, the establishment may be subject to periodic inspection for compliance with this approval. Failure to comply with this approval may result in suspension or revocation of this approval and in fines in accordance with Massachusetts law. Second. All those in favor, Joe. Aye. 
Mary. Aye. Karen. Aye. Okay. I further move that the board approve the request of 99 restaurants of Boston LLC, DBA 99 restaurant and pub pursuant to COVID-19 order number 35 to temporarily alter the license premises under liquor license number 00037-RS-0528 for the period commencing as of the effective date of this approval and expiring on November 1, 2020 for operations in compliance with the aforesaid motion. Second. All those in favor, Joe. Aye. Mary. Aye. Karen. Aye. Great. Uh, okay. Um, Susan, I, I've got a question for you just in the interest of time this evening. Um, yep. since, since the general conditions are the same for all of these, can we say general conditions as presented and have Heidi reflect them in the minutes in full? I just, it's, it's just, a lot to read. Um, they're all on the record for this meeting. Um, I, I'm comfortable with that. I would, I would, you know, if the other two members are comfortable with that. Um, I think all the general conditions have been now stated twice in the record of this meeting. And if you refer to the general conditions as recited in the record of this meeting, then someone will be easily able to identify them. I mean, I agree. I yeah. agree. And Karen, you read my mind. So I just you. think, you know, <laughs> I was thinking, Joe, right, like for, for street openings and the like, we just refer to the... Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, right. Um, but, I, you know, I think it was important to run through them, and I think it helped us kind of formulate our thinking about how we might, you know, frame some of them, but I, I, I think we're good, unless Mary feels otherwise. No, I, I've been, like, furiously taking notes on that second vote, because when it was my turn, I didn't want to screw it up. <laughs> and you're up next, Mary. You're totally up next. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Yeah. Now that you, now that we can just say as recited. Um, <laughs> I'll mess oh. that up. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next up is the Boathouse Bistro. Um, is there a representative from the Boathouse Bistro on the line? Hi, this is Stephen McCauley. Hi, Stephen. Uh, if you could just maybe take us quickly through um, what it is you'd like, like from the board this evening. And we are hoping to expand some of our seating to the um, walkway area of the Hingham Shipyard. Um, there is an expansion area that is past my patio fence and before the walkway, which on the right side of the shipyard, the other two patios are already using that area. It's within their confined. Um, so that's where we were hoping to put some additional tables and to the front uh, left and right of our entrance. Okay, so Karen, this is Susan. I just gonna point on the area and then I'll put up their plan. So I believe, and please correct me if I'm wrong, the area is in this area here outside of their existing enclosure. And then in areas right here on either side of their entrance. So that's from an aerial perspective, that's what you would see if you walked into the shipyard. Okay. And then I will. Um, is this is this plan, is the other, hold on a second, let me just. Are you seeing the other plan, the, the hand-drawn plan? No. No. No, okay, just a minute. Okay, so this is this is now looking at it from the opposite direction. I can flip it if that would be easier. But now you are have your back to the water. Yep. And this is their patio. This is the proposed tables, and these are the tables. And I'm going to slide it up a little bit. There you go. Okay, I'll I'll turn it over to the applicant. And it's uh it's ten in total. Ten tables in total. Yes. Um, okay, anything further you'd like to offer with respect to the plan? So maybe talk to us about uh, where people might wait, how people will use the restroom, that kind of like the, the proposed traffic pattern here. Yeah, there are front benches in front of the restaurant and when people call in for the reservation, we have their cell phone numbers. So if there is, does happen to be a wait, be a wait, we're calling them, we're in touch with them. And that's already going on with our patio as we speak, because we do have a patio that we're using now. Um, and when their tables are ready, we call them and come greet them and bring them to their table. 
and I noticed, um, so if you push curbside pickup further to the right or left, I'm... Yep. Yeah, okay. Curb, curbside, when, pe when people come in, we call out, depending on where they're parked, and we bring it out to their car. We're pushing prepayment on the phone with credit cards, et cetera. Okay. Um, uh, okay, anybody from the um, restaurant reopening group uh, that could speak to this application? This is Susan. Um, we worked on their takeout and asked them to do curbside pickup with credit card payment for the takeout. And they have ample six feet of spacing between table to table. And I would defer to Chris Napoli on the patio section to the left of Boathouse. Um, they're in between the planners. I think that's adequate spacing that they can have any fire issues if necessary. Uh, great. Lieutenant Napoli. Hello, yeah, it's Lieutenant Napoli. So basically, when we looked at this, the, if you look at the plaza area, when the shipyard was designed and built, that was actually left as a fire lane. We can actually access that with fire apparatus if we had to. Um, I've had several meetings down there with Scott and with the different restaurants and such about opening up that and expanding their seating into the plaza area. Um, it's a temporary thing. We know November 1st, all this rescinds and they've all been advised that, you know, we're allowing this now because of the current situation, but this isn't going to be something that every summer we're going to go, hey, you can expand into the plaza area. You know, after November 1st, it goes back to being a fire lane for all essential purposes. Um, as far as expanding out on the front, the only thing you really have in the front there is the drop-off area for the cinemas and sometimes where they make deliveries. And even where those planters are on the other tables, there's actually no parking spaces there. So it's, it's actually a pretty safe area to be in. They're also going to put some other obstructions out there to help protect that area. But um, all in all, I think it's pretty safe. It's a pretty, uh, pretty good plan. And I think it's going to work for them as well as the other restaurants down along that plaza. Yeah, I guess that, that's what I wanted to ask, uh, you know, similar to uh, the Derby Street shops, uh, um, has the landlord down there worked with the restaurants that are right, you know, right along that plaza area that they, they could be accommodated should they want to expand their outdoor dining as well? Um, absolutely. Uh, I was actually down there last Friday with Scott from the shipyard, along with Paul Wahlberg and Alan McKenna from uh, Wahlbergers, and uh, just working on their area. Also spoke to Trident's uh, manager. So they're all putting plans in. They were actually just finalizing them, getting them squared away. Uh, Boathouse was just kind of ahead of the curve on getting this done. But um, the, the shipyard Samuels and Associates has been very accommodating, working with the town and working with their um, tenants to uh, help them out and get them, get their ex outdoor seating expanded. Okay. And, um, you know, we've had, we've had some concerns expressed by residents down there about noise. I, I, I see that the outdoor dining goes to 10. It was, is that an expansion of the hours or is that consistent with your outdoor dining, Steve? The, the outdoor dining that was previously allowed? Last, last summer on our patio, we did serve till 10, um, but during the COVID, we've stopped at nine. Okay. Um, uh, just, so here, just because. To 10. Yep. Okay. Um, okay, Joe, questions um, with respect to the Boathouse Bistro application? No, I, I think this is an excellent plan. Just following up on your comment about the other tenants, I do note the uh, applicant included in their packet the letter from Samuels and Associates authorizing and supporting Boathouse Bistro to apply for a license uh, for outdoor seating consistent with these plans. So we do have a commitment from the landlord that these plans are, are, are fine with them. Uh, I, and I have uh, had both takeout and outdoor seating prior to COVID. Uh, from Boathouse Bistro, and I found that it has worked flawlessly, and I am looking forward to have it continue to work flawlessly. I've got no comments. I think it's a great plan. Excellent. Mary, questions or comments with respect to the Boathouse Bistro application? No, uh, I, I appreciated the explanation of the curbside pickup. That was the only question that I had in reviewing this, and I appreciate Susan's explanation. Great. Thank you. Uh, questions or comments from the public with respect to the Boathouse Bistro application? Seeing none, I would accept a motion. All right, I'll give this a try. I'll make a motion that the board approve the application of MCC4LBD, DBA Boathouse Bistro, to expand outdoor table service, OTS, in accordance with COVID-19 order number 35, and the Town of Hingham COVID-19 temporary policy 
regarding restaurant outdoor table service, the OTS policy as recited subject to the following con to the conditions as recited in the record of this meeting. So actually, I, did I get that Joe? Almost. No. <laughs> so subject to the following conditions, A, I would read A and then we're just the general conditions will be B that you don't have to read. Okay. Uh, following conditions, A, site specific conditions in accordance with ABCC guidelines for extension of premises to patio and outdoor areas. The entire OTS premises as defined in the OTS policy and shown on the approved plan must be enclosed by a fence rope or other means to prevent access from the pedestrian walkway areas. Such enclosure must be in a place in a manner satisfactory to the Hingham Police Department prior to opening of the OTS premises and general conditions as recited in the record of this meeting. Second. All those in favor, Joe. Aye. Mary. Aye. Karen, aye. Excellent. All right. And then the second vote. I'll make a motion that the board approve the request of MCC 4LBD DBA Boathouse Bistro pursuant to COVID-19 order number 35 to temporarily alter the license premises under liquor license 00062-RS-0528 for the period commencing as of the date of this approval and expiring on November 1, 2020 for operations in compliance with the aforesaid motion. I would just amend that to should commencing as of the effective date of this approval. Oh, the effective date. Yep. Thank you. Second. All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Mary? Aye. Karen? Aye. Excellent. All right. Uh, and last, but by no means least, uh, we have an application for outdoor table service from the Square Cafe. Is there somebody on the line from the Square Cafe uh, that could take us through their request? Okay, yeah, this is uh, Luke Joyheim and Cal is here with me also. How are we doing? Good, how are you? Good. Excellent. Um, yeah, so we're looking to uh, kind of access 30 additional seats outside on the front um, walkway. Uh, we've got right now eight tables uh, spaced six feet apart. We've allowed four feet additionally for the walkway to be utilized by guests. And then we had an additional 14 feet that uh, La Petite, La Petite Maison was going to offer to us uh, for an additional two tables. Um, is there somebody from the restaurant reopening group that could speak to this application? Susan, do you? Do I don't know if Emily or Jeff are interested in speaking to it, or um, I think, you know, Glenn or I could do it as well. I just. Yeah, I guess, you know, okay. I'm, I'm interested in yep. hearing the analysis of, you know, that the yep. sidewalk is somewhat narrow and as we talked right. about before, it's in a busy location. All so. right, Susan, I'm un unmuted as well. So either way. Okay, sorry. Well, Emily, I don't know if you, do you want to speak to the general layout and then we can ask yeah. either yeah. Um, Sergeant Kilroy or Chief um, Olson to speak about, you know, the Jersey barriers and the safety issues. piece of it. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so this was a challenging application, um, but I will say that the applicants worked very well with the restaurant reopening committee and um, we've gone through a number of iterations over the last couple of weeks. Right now, I think we're at a place where we can all temporarily support um, outdoor sidewalk seating for the restaurant in a way that is safe and uh, support the restaurant. So I'm happy to go through the details, but at the end of the day, this is um, something that I think is great for the downtown. And I hope we can maybe look at it in a longer term, term fashion. Great. Um, Sergeant Kilroy, any any traffic specific comments? See on the line.
Sergeant Kilroy. He's muted. Yeah. Maybe the chief, anybody? <laughs> yeah, I got it. Uh, yep. Go ahead. Oh, hi, can... hi. this is Chief Olson. Um, thank you for unmuting me. <laughs> um, yeah, this uh, Emily is 100% correct. Uh, this was one of our toughest ones, I think. And I think the group really came together. And um, we know that this is an area that, unfortunately, has had three accidents within the past 10 years in that location. So uh, we wanted to really allow this place to allow them to open up. And we just wanted to make sure that it was properly um, that it was safe there so that people were sitting in that top corner didn't have to worry. Um, uh, so we sort of insisted on the Jersey barriers knowing that uh, they were able to operate there for a while under those conditions uh, before. Um, I would have no problem sitting at that table and feel very safe now. And I think that's what we all wanted. Um, Great. I, I so appreciate I, that. I, I, I really believe it. And I think one of the things is um, you know, we talked about the fact that uh, we can you can decorate Jersey barriers a lot. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with them. So uh, for those that are concerned about the aesthetics of it, I think, you know, um, that could be helped out with some plants or something like that. So or, or some paintings and maybe some artwork on them would be would be nice. Great. Um... And this one, this application's uh, somewhat unique in that, um, in addition to the OTS application, um, the town, because this is on a public way, the town will need to enter into a license for the temporary use of the real estate with, um, with the Square Cafe. Um, questions from uh, my colleagues, Joe. Uh, I uh, this morning I walked this site with Emily because I knew it was a challenging site. I wanted to get comfortable with what was being proposed, uh, and I am very comfortable. Um, I think it really works. The position of the Jersey barriers makes sense. Um, I've decided we're going to nickname them the Rhode Island barriers because they're going to be a lot nicer than Jersey barriers. Um, <laughs> but I, I really think that this this plan works. Uh, I was also concerned about uh, La Petite Maison, but I do see that we have a letter submitted uh, that confirms that uh, the, the owner there has consented to the use of the sidewalk space in front of uh, La Petite Maison for these purposes. So I think it's a good plan. A lot of thoughts gone into it and I support it. Great, thank you. Mary, questions or comments with respect to this application? Uh, I would just echo Joe's uh, appreciation to the owner of La Petite Maison for uh, helping out with this. No, I, I would just say, you know, looking at these plans myself and Sharon gave me some information today that was helpful. Um, it's very helpful for me to hear the explanations from, um, from the team in terms of what they looked at, uh, concerns they have, concerns they don't have. Um, and uh, I, I just really appreciate the very thorough job that you're doing. And I also appreciate the fact that you're, you're coming at this with from an angle of how can we get to yes, which um, I think uh, I think all of these businesses appreciate. Yeah, and, and I also feel like this is a great group because it's 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 bringing together the you know the 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 various skill sets that you really need to have in the room to I think efficiently process these applications. So again, I think on I know it's on top of everybody's kind of normal workday, but um, I, I do appreciate this group coming together and. Um, and taking taking on this task. Uh, Chief Olson, your hands up, give a further comment. No, no, that was just from before when you were looking to get a speaker. Okay. Sorry, that was, that was my fault. That's okay. Yeah, Karen, you, usually people have their hands up when the chief points to them, not, not the other way. <laughs> uh, Susan's, um, Susan's, and uh, Karen, this is Susan, sorry. I, I just wanted to point out that uh, there are, there are, um, this is one site that does have a few site specific conditions. I know the applicants been working very diligently. They have been peppered with lots of questions and kind of tweaking to their plans. Um, they were provided, I believe by Sharon last night with a, uh, the draft of the license that the Board of Selectmen's also received. Um, in addition to them getting the confirmation email 
from Sharon that their permit's been filed, they will need to sign that um, license agreement and scan it back so that we have it. And then um, Tom Mayo as a town administrator uh, can then um, execute on behalf of the town. So depending on their timing for wanting to get up and going, that does need to be signed and in the town's hand in order to be in effect. And the other item is um, the applicant is bringing in the Jersey barriers and they will need to coordinate with the police department before those Jersey barriers are brought down North Street. Um, I know that Randy Sylvester has said that someone, he could make someone from his department um, available. They just need to, because of the size of them and where they're going, they, there needs to be DPW and or police in on site as those are being placed to make sure they're safely placed and placed in the right locations. And I, 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 I know that that's part of the site specific condition. Yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, the one question I had about the uh, license and uh, Susan Sarney, I'll, I'll, I, I do see your hand. I'll recognize you in one second. Um, uh, typically we don't sign agreements until the applicant has signed. So I'm assuming that we'll, we'll vote to enter into this license agreement, but Tom wouldn't execute until he receives an executed copy from um, Square Cafe, right? That's fine with me, Karen. Yep. Okay. Um, Susan Starney. I just want to thank everyone that's been on the restaurant reopening and we have a couple more to give you guys, but I think the town of Hingham is, so excited to have outdoor seating. And we're gonna proceed with all the state COVID regulations. And I couldn't have done it with all, without the restaurant reopening and the selectmen being on board. And this is exciting for all restaurants in downtown Derby Street and other areas in Hingham. Thank you guys. Thank you. We really appreciate the hard work and the creativity that's gone into this. Um, Lynn Barclay, I see you're on the line. I don't, I don't know whether you wanna make any yeah, thank you. Hi, thank you, Karen. Um, I just wanted to echo everyone's um, appreciation and, and thank you. Just appreciate all the collaborative effort on Square Cafe and, and the Restaurant Reopening Committee and the Board of Selectmen for all your time and effort to get us to where we are today. Also, Board of Selectmen for accommodating extra meetings for hearings because I know this is your second meeting this week. Um, to Emily's point, this is great for downtown and it's what our downtown needs so um, I'm thrilled that we'll be the prospect of having El Fresco dining downtown is, is, is great so thank you everyone for all your efforts on this. Great thanks. Any further questions or comments from the, from the public with respect to the application of the Square Cafe? Seeing none I would accept a motion. Oh Karen? Karen? Yeah. Yes, Carol. I'm sorry, it's Carol. I'm sorry. I didn't. I thought I was muted. I'm sorry. I didn't hear how many seats for the Square Cafe. It was a little blurry. So was it 30? Yes. Yeah. Did you hear that? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Any further questions, comments? Uh, okay. Yeah, it's Lieutenant Napoli. Yeah. I thought we actually, uh, two tables had actually been taken out until it was actually in place and we could have regulate because of the uh, distance on the sidewalk. Did that change? I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, with the question, tables four and five. Yeah, so th those were out until we can figure out the fencing and such, correct? Yes, but we can revisit that in the actual process of once we get the gating set up and that process. Okay, yeah, I, I just want I just want to make sure that was clear. Just no problem, just clarification. I, I, this is Carol. I'd actually like to ask a quick question about that. I guess from, from listening to the last three that have gone through, I would assume that, or it sounds like that isn't really, those four and five, we have sufficient space based upon what I saw for the other applications. Um, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I know that in any other sidewalk or side sidewalk dining where they would have the same exact challenge and I seeing that those were approved I would imagine that there would not be that concern here for I can tables. I can probably answer that this is Susan Go ahead, Susan. Um, so Carol um, state regulations require six feet of distance between 
high traffic areas and you're showing three or four feet. That's why we asked to remove those table four and five from that. I don't believe any other previous applications had that distance and we can work with you once we get you open and see what the seating is. Okay, uh, thank you. That's fine. Okay, so, so just to be clear, the plan that we're approving tonight um, it takes those two tables out. That was certainly my impression of the application. So the 26 rather than 30. 30. Okay. Uh, okay. I would uh, I would accept the I would accept the number of motions on this one. I'll make a motion that the town enter into a license with a fork in the road LLC, DBA the Square Cafe, for use of a portion of the public sidewalk within the right of way of North Street in connection with outdoor table service pursuant to COVID-19 order number 35 for a term expiring on November 1, 2020 or earlier termination of such outside table service subject to conditions as are set forth in the license draft dated June 17, 2020. Second. All those in favor, Joe. Aye. Mary. Aye. Karen, aye. Well, want me to do one? Sure. Um, okay, I would I would accept a motion that the board approve the application of a fork in the road LLC DBA the Square Cafe to expand out outside table service OTS in accordance with COVID nineteen order number thirty five in the town of Hingham COVID nineteen temporary policy regarding restaurant outdoor table service the OTS policy subject to the following conditions a site specific conditions. This approval is subject to the applicant's execution and delivery of a license for the use of the public sidewalk in the form required by the town of Hingham and its continued compliance therewith. A failure to comply with a license shall be deemed to be a failure to comply with this approval. Two, prior to the operation of the OTS premises, a 10 foot Jersey barrier shall be placed by the applicant in each of the two locations indicated in the photos that constitute part of the approved plan. The date and time of the placement of the Jersey barriers must be coordinated in advance with Randy Sylvester, superintendent of the Hingham DPW and the Hingham Police Department. The Jersey barriers must remain in such locations as long as outside table service operates under this approval. Number three, the patio enclosure required in accordance with ABCC guidelines for extension of premises to patio and outdoor areas must be placed in the location shown on the approved plan with the further condition that such enclosure must be placed not less than four feet from the highest point of each of the handicap accessible sidewalk ramps, providing access from the crosswalks from both Central Street and North Street. The location of such enclosure shall be subject to inspection by the town and must be adjusted if necessary to meet the minimum four foot setback requirement. Number four, a temporary enclosure in the style of the black fence shown in the representation submitted by the applicant is approved, provided however that such fence is available for installation and prior to operation of the OTS premises, the, application, the applicant shall install and maintain an enclosure to prevent access from the remainder of the public sidewalk. The materials used for the initial enclosure shall be subject to the approval of the Hingham Police Department. In no event may any holes be drilled into the sidewalk, nor any other modifications be made to the sidewalk in connection with the installation of any enclosure required for the OTS premises, and B, the general conditions as recited uh, during this meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Joe. Aye. Uh, Mary. Aye. Karen. Aye. Okay. And then the third vote, I move that the board approve the request of a fork in the road LLC DBA the Square Cafe pursuant to COVID-19 order number 35 to temporarily alter the license premises under liquor license number. 05168-RS-0528 for the period commencing as of the as of the effective date of this approval and expiring on November 1, 2020 uh, for operations in accordance with the motion just uh, adopted. Second. All those in favor, Joe. Aye. Mary. Aye. Karen. Aye. Great. Very, very excited. I, I think this is going to be really welcome in all of these locations and I appreciate again all of the hard work of the restaurant reopening group and the cooperation of all of the restaurant tours and you know I, I know the public is um, really really interested in you know getting back outside and uh, enjoying Hingham and enjoying your great uh, food and beverages.
So thank you very much. Yeah, and if, um, I, uh, excuse me for just a moment. I'm going to have to sign off because I have to represent the board at the Plymouth County Advisory Board meeting that's beginning at seven. So uh, I will I will be leaving the meeting right now. But um, thank you very much. Thanks for being here, Mary. Good luck. Thank you. So we we actually going to have to jump pretty quickly to. Um, is there any public comment for items not on the agenda this evening? I'm not seeing any. Um, any appointments this evening? Yes, uh, I'd like to move to appoint Jean Silverio, Silverio to the Council on Aging to fill an unexpired term ending June 30, 2020. Um, she is a retired teacher, 36 years in the Boston Public Schools, advanced degrees in education and leadership. She's been active with the Council of Aging in their 50th anniversary committee. I've spoken with Jennifer Young, the town's elder services director, who's very excited about working with Jean. I've also spoken with Dawn, uh, Dawn, who's the chair of the Council on Aging. She's also excited. And so I um, am very excited to uh, make this motion to appoint Jean Silverio to the Council on Aging. I would second that. I, I also spoke with Dawn and uh, read the, uh, the great um, application um, from Jean, and I think she'll make a tremendous, uh, be a tremendous member on the Council on Aging. So I second that motion. All those in favor, Joe? Aye. Karen, aye. Okay, um, do you, should we hold the um, Selectman and Town Administrator reports till after our next meeting? Um, because we've got to jump to that. I think that's a great idea. Okay, because that yeah. starts at seven, right, everybody? Yes, it does, yes. Okay, so for anybody who's interested in um, quorum at town meeting on Saturday, please join us on our next Zoom call. But otherwise, I would accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second, second. all those in favor, Joe? Aye. Karen, aye. 